Forget what you know, olive oil makes you fat. I wanted to do an educational piece on something I saw recently, a new article that's been circulating talking about how olive oil you need to be careful of. Olive oil is going to make you fat. I have just seen so much overreaction theater over the years to various studies that when I go in and I actually read the research paper, I'm like, are you serious? And in fact, virtually every time when a research paper comes out and people are like, Lane, have you seen this? And I see the headline on the news and then I go read the paper. I go, okay, guys, I'm going to pull up this article real quick, read a section from it, and then I will pull up the research paper, read that for you, and we will talk about why I'm not concerned about olive oil. And in fact, of all the sources of fat, I thought olive oil was the one thing that everybody agreed on. Seed oils that are not olive oil, seed oils, even Paul Saladino is like, okay, olive oil is fine. Even Paul says it's fine. And we've got, you know, vegans who are like saturated fats, bad olive oil, big part of Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean diet, very consistently, best diet out there for heart disease. And now we got people saying olive oil is going to make you fat. This is from Medical Express. Excessive oleic acid found in olive oil shown to drive fat cell growth. Oleic acid is a fatty acid in olive oil. Already they'd given away that this study wasn't on olive oil. It was just on oleic acid. Eating a high fat diet containing a large amount of oleic acid, a type of fatty acid commonly found in olive oil, could drive obesity more than other types of dietary fats, according to a study published in the Journal of Cell Reports. That's all I'm going to read from this article. The study title, Dietary Oleic Acid Drives Obesogenic Adipogenesis Via Modulation of LXR Alpha Signaling. Interesting. So I am just going to summarize here. Dietary fat composition has changed substantially during the obesity epidemic as adipocyte hyperplasia, hyperplasia is increased in the number of fat cells, is a major mechanism of adipose expansion. We aim to ascertain how dietary fats affect adipogenesis during obesity. Basically, they found that really high intakes of oleic acid in mice stimulated LXR alpha and AKT2, which are involved in adipogenesis. Okay, back the truck up. First off, mouse study. Second off, not olive oil, just oleic acid in a really high dose, looking at metabolic signals involved in adipogenesis. That is not the same thing as olive oil makes you fat. And you know, if only we had studies where they gave people olive oil and looked at body cups. Oh wait, we have them. What do the research studies in humans show? Olive oil tends to decrease body fat and improve body composition. And in fact, there was a recent study where they fed olive oil versus other fats at the same total calories and actually found the group getting a high amount of olive oil and about 50% of their fats from monosaturated fats actually lost more body fat at the same calorie intake as people consuming other fats like polyunsaturated fats. So again, this is a situation of mechanisms versus outcomes. It's cool that we have studies in mice that show when you feed a crap load of an isolated fatty acid that it may stimulate phosphorylation at certain amino acid residues of LXR alpha and AKT2. That is not the same thing as olive oil making you fat. This is like a study like 10 years ago. I remember this. The headline in the news was, I'm paraphrasing, but something to the effect of smelling your partner's farts may help decrease your risk of cancer. And the study was in mice and it was feeding high amounts of an isolated short chain fatty acid. I think it was butyrate, which is produced by gut bacteria. And yes, when you pass gas, butyrate is present in gas. They found that when they fed butyrate to these rodents in high doses, that I think they had less risk of getting cancer. That's great. That's not the same thing as smelling your partner's farts decreases your risk of cancer. The leaps that the news makes are so ridiculous. It is insane. And the same thing happens on social media. They take a study that is meant to test a very, very narrow research question in mice, by the way, and then make a huge, enormous, Superman-esque leap to a conclusion in humans as an outcome. And again, if we have absolutely no data on the topic, and this is the only study we've got, then you know what I would say? I would say, that's interesting. We need some human studies and we need more time. But we have quite a few human studies 
whether they be cohort data or randomized controlled trials, demonstrating that olive oil either has a neutral or positive effect on body composition and fat loss. So who really gives a crap about an unphysiological study in mice? I sure as hell don't, and I am not worried about olive oil. If you want to use this line of logic as to why certain foods may be bad for you, I promise you I can make an argument as to why literally every single food that you could ever possibly eat is bad for you. I could make that argument based on some chemical compound in it, which by the way, all food is made up of chemicals. I'm not just talking about lab-made foods or synthetic things. Everything's chemicals. And yes, there are chemicals in organic foods that if I pick them out in isolation and look for studies where they fed high doses to rodents, I could find negative health effects. This is the same argument that carnivore folks use to try and tell you why plants are toxic. There's no thought to physiology. There's no thought to doses. It's just look at this one compound and when they fed a load to it in rats or mice, they saw, Meh. great, who gives a damn? It doesn't matter. What matters is human outcome data. Studies like this are interesting, but they are not things to make recommendations on. And quite frankly, this is an example of news stations so desperately trying to get eyeballs that they are just putting out the most provocative headlines they can to get you to look. Of all the fats out there, like I said, pretty much everybody agreed, okay, olive oil is good for you. And now a news station is like, oh, look, olive oil is bad. We can get eyeballs. And it just drives me nuts. All right, guys, I'm out.